In this video, I'm going to make a simple elevator using linear velocity and line orientation. Brah! It's going to be pretty cool. It's not as safe as using tweening because when you're using forces, things can mess up. It's a little bit more real world like, but I mean, if you mess up your elevator, you can have a repairman come out or something like that and adjust it. I thought that'd be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get started. There we go. All right, we're down. I have a fresh base plate right here, and I think we should get our platform moving first. So I'm gonna put a part out in the world, and this is gonna be the elevator floor. So I'll call it elevator floor. Oh, two O's, there we go. And we're gonna make it a little bit bigger. Let's go down to size. I'm gonna make this 12. I'll keep it at one by 12. All right, so that's our elevator floor. We're going to need a base for the elevator and that's going to be for the align orientation. So I'm going to do a control D with collisions off. So I'll do a control D, it'll duplicate in place. You won't see anything different, but there's two parts there, one right inside the other. Let's call this elevator base. All right, now the base, we're not going to need to see it. So I'll turn transparency to one, it'll, be, it'll become invisible. We're gonna go down to can collide, turn that off, and then anchored so it doesn't fall through the floor. All right, now, we wanna move our elevator floor with forces, so we don't want it to actually hit the floor, hit the base plate. I'm gonna make it slightly smaller. So I'm gonna go back to elevator floor, and I'm gonna to go to my size, and instead of one on the Y, I'm gonna make it 0.8. There we go. Slightly smaller, so there's a tiny little gap in there. All right, now what we should do is make this into a model. Let's go ahead and select both the base and the floor. We're gonna right click, group as model. We'll call this elevator. And let's open this up. On the elevator floor, let's add our linear velocity constraint. So hit the plus on elevator floor, and then we'll do an L for linear velocity. There we go, and that's a linear velocity constraint. We are going to need an attachment. So back on the elevator floor, hit the plus AT for attachment. I usually call this ATT0, but we're gonna have more than one because we're gonna have our line orientation. So I might call this LV underscore ATT0. I don't know if I said one, ATT0. So go to your linear velocity and we gotta hook up our attachment. There's our attachment zero. LV ATT0. Nice, and then also check to see if relative to is world. That's what we want, relative to world. All right, now we need a script too, right? So let's go to our elevator. We're gonna hit the plus. We're gonna add a script, and we'll call it move it. Move it, there. Let's make this text a little bit bigger so you can see it. There. We'll get a variable for our elevator, local elevator. That's going to be script.parent. That's the model. And let's get our floor. That's going to be the primary part where all the movement is going to be happening. Say floor script.parent.floor. Do I got it? Oh, we call it elevator floor. Cool. I'm going to make that primary part now. I'm gonna make it a primary part now. So I click the elevator, I'll go to primary part, and we'll go to elevator floor. That won't be very necessary for this video, but if you start making more of your elevator, start doing like a pivot, get pivot and pivot too, it's gonna be helpful. So let's get our linear velocity from the floor, right? We have our floor, and this is called linear velocity. What else are we gonna need? Oh, uh, we don't need our orientation yet. I wanna show you what it looks like without the align orientation. Let's get our linear velocity, set the max force to math.huge. 
we'll wait like three seconds so we can come into the world, see it before it starts. And then let's do a while true do. So I'll just loop it so it can go up and down. And at the beginning of each loop, let's wait two more seconds. That's good. That'll give us like five seconds to get in the game and see everything happening. So we'll do a move up first, right? We don't have any floors to put them on. Let's just try and guess, right? We'll get our linear velocity. And then we have our velocity vector we have to set. We have our floor part. And let's use the C frame of the floor part. Now remember, I did not mess with the orientation of the part, but we could run into trouble if you got creative on your parts. So I recommend clicking on the elevator floor, right clicking, and then let's look for show orientation indicator. Ah, there it is. See that little F right there? Well, that little green arrow is pointing up. That is the up vector of our floor. That's what we want. So the blue is, is the front, right? The, this little blue F, that's the front and then green is up. So if you just did a default pop it in the world, uh, the top is gonna be up. But if you didn't, it could mess you up and then you'll be mad and you'll see like, ah, oh, man, your video doesn't work, brah. There we go. So. We are gonna go 10 studs per second up, right? And this is a unit vector, it's of length one. So it's one times 10. We're going up 10 in one second. So we will run this for one second, it'll go up 10 studs. All right? then we'll get our linear velocity, we'll get the velocity vector, and then let's set that thing to zero after one second has passed. Now maybe we'll wait a second so people can get off, right? Now we have to set this up for buttons. So this is just a rough copy right here. We're gonna put this in functions so you can send, you can send like a three for third floor. That's what we want, that's our goal. Let's just go ahead and do a little note here, say move down. Right. And then how do we move down? Oh, it's going to be a lot like moving up, right? Let's just go ahead and get this. Control C. Let's paste it. Control V. And what is the opposite of the up vector? The negative up vector. That's down. We're going to go for a second and then we're going to stop. And of course, stop is when the velocity factor is zero, zero, zero. So we're gonna maintain a position. That's why it's stopping and waiting. Like right here, it's gonna be on the first floor. It's gonna be stopping and waiting. Well, second floor, right? We're gonna start on the first. Let's go ahead and try this out. Let's go to our world and then we'll hit play. There we go. And there's our elevator. Oh, it went up. And we're gonna put a little floor at 10 studs just to make sure it's okay. But check this out. If I go over here, am I gonna mess it up? Nope, not heavy enough, but we can mess it up. And this is why we're gonna delete, we're gonna need our align orientation. If we plop a part down there, let's go ahead and move it. Let's make it a little bit heavier, right? So we gotta make it bigger. And we'll make it metal so that it has more mass. Marble would have worked. All right, now let's go ahead and play this. See what happens. Boo! No bueno. All right, let's fix that. So we're gonna fix that by using an align orientation constraint on the floor. It's going to make the orientation align with some reference point. Oh, look at that, perfect. We can keep the orientation the same as on the elevator base. Let's put an attachment on our elevator base. I'll call this attachment. Well, do ATT for attachment, get that, and then we can call it something, right? We can call this align AO for align orientation. ATT, we're gonna make this one, right? So we want attachment zero to align with uh, attachment one. Let's put our ATT zero 
right here. We get our elevator floor, ATT for attachment. And then let's put an AO in front of it so we don't get confused. AO for line orientation, ATT zero. We want this attachment to be aligned to that attachment in regards to orientation. Let's go to our elevator floor, hit the plus. We'll do an A. How about an AL? There's a line orientation. Cool. Get the line orientation. And we are going to have rigidity enabled. There we go. We're going to keep it, keep it really strong. And then we're going to go to attachment zero. Click AO ATT zero. And then we're going to go to attachment one, which is actually on the elevator base. Nice. All right. Now let's play this. Let's see what that block does. And where is it? There it is. All right. Look at that. It's looking pretty solid. We can jump up and down. The block's kind of bumping up and down because it's not attached. I think that's working pretty good. Let's go ahead and add a floor. All right, so I turned the player off. Let's get rid of this part. We proved our point. We need to add a floor so we can do some getting on and getting off of the elevator. I'm going to go to model and I'm going to turn this off for now. I'm going to hit collisions, turn collisions on. I'll do my movement. I'm going to bump this right up against my elevator. But remember, we want to move it a little bit. So we can hit our move and then maybe one, two. Point two studs out. So there's a little bit of a gap. We don't want the elevator hitting the floor, even with the align orientation. If we hit a solid anchored part, we could run into trouble. So let's make this a little bit bigger. We'll do scale, we'll move this out. Doesn't have to be exact, right? This is part of the building. That's why I didn't put it in the elevator model. Move this out this way. Cool. And should we make it the same size as the as the elevator base? As the elevator floor? Yeah, let's make the height the same. I think we had that at what? 0 0.8? 0 0.8. I didn't do that in the demo. So you could see that there was a little bit of a little bit of a discrepancy of the floors. That's not bad. All right, let's go ahead and anchor that. That's our part. Just so we don't get confused. Let's call this a floor. And we'll anchor it. Boom, turning collisions off. I'm going to duplicate in place, control D. Let's go ahead and move this up in snaps of 10, right? Because that's what our, our speed is, our elevator speed. So I'll go pop that up, control D, pop that up. Yeah, looking good. So it should go up one floor. Let's try it. Here we go. Up a floor, down a floor. Yeah, looking good. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of code cleanup. And you also have to remember that because we're using movement constraints, this could be messed up in game and you're gonna have to have some way of recovering. Maybe we could do a follow-up video. But what I wanna do today is finish this off with uh, cleaning the code up so that you can send a two in from like a bindable event or from like a click detector and then it'll go to the second floor or send a three in and it can go from the first to the third right we don't have very good code for that right now in the movements in the move it script we just have this loop let's add a couple variables so we can do some floor calculations and go right to the floor we want let's do a local i'm going to get a floor distance right because we have this literal down here. We don't want literals. We want a variable. And I'm also going to get a variable for the current floor. I'm going to need to keep track of my floor. So current floor is one. Let's make a function. And I'll call that move elevator. We're going to pass in the floors we want to move. All right. And that could be a positive or a negative number. So we're going to need a direction. Let's make a variable for the direction. We'll assign it one. That's going to be up. It's a positive one. But if the floors 
are less than zero, then direction will be negative one. How are we going to use that? We are going to grab, let's say this code right here. Let's just grab this. Control C, Control V. This is going to be our floor distance. Remember, we made that 10. That way, we don't have a literal in there. And then we'll multiply this by direction. Now we don't have to worry about putting the negative in front of here if we want to go down because it's going to be it's going to be here. Cool. What else do we need? Ah, oh, wow. What if this is like what if the floors is like three floors? We're going to have to change our weight. So, we would ideally want uh, the number of floors here, but if this is a negative 3, uh, we can't have a negative 3 seconds. We're going to have to do a math dot absolute value to get rid of the negative sign if it exists. So if it's a go down three floors, this is going to become three seconds right here. Cool. Do we have to do anything here? Anything else here? Yes. We have to change our current floor because we just moved floors. How much? Let's do a plus equal floors. So if this is a negative three, it goes down three. If it's a positive three, it goes up three. We can't go up and down three floors because uh, we don't have that many floors, but theoretically. We're not doing any checks here. I think I'm going to keep this weight two in between the loop. I'm going to keep the loop there. It's kind of cool. And I'm going to make a variable for our destination floor. This is what would come in with the click detector or through the remote event or something like that, depending on how you want to move your elevator. And then we want to calculate our floors to move. Floors to move. And we'll get our desk floor minus the current floor. So if we're on one and the desk floor is three, we want to move two floors. So then we'll do our move elevator floors to move. So we're going to go, default is going to be the first floor. We're going to go up to the third floor. And then let's go down. We will wait here a second. So I'm not going to put a wait here. Let's just do a cut and paste. Control C. Let's go down to the first floor and then maybe go to the second floor. So we're changing our desk floor, right? The destination floor. All right, let's see what we got. So we should go, we're going to start at one, go to three, down to one, up to two, and then start all over again at three. So from two to three. Let's see if it works, right? We're going to know if we're like halfway, halfway to, this, uh, to the death point in the sky. Three, good. One, good. Two, nice. Three, one, two. I like it. 